Greetings fellow makers, I'm Brittany Duran from Punished Props. Welcome to this live stream. Today I'm going to be working on my new costume for Dragon Con. I've had one video tutorial go up already for the feet, and today I'm going to be working on the forearms. This is the sweeper bot from Destiny, and I love this character. I've got to make all of these different armor pieces. Got a lot of work to do, but fortunately you'll see in the background here, I've started with the chest piece, I got some legs going on. I'll be having videos for those up in the future, so make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to check out all of those builds. Conveniently, all of the different robot frames that hang out in the tower in the video game Destiny have the same base model. They just have different armor parts attached to them, and the sweeper bot is kind of like the base model. If you go into the inventory of one of the robots that sell stuff, you can get some higher resolution models to kind of use as reference. So this is a screenshot I got of a different robot, but it's the same as the sweeper bot. Since the sweeper bot never stops sweeping and is a pain to take screenshots of, We'll be making this guy today. The inside of the arm is hollow, so I might add these little trenches in. We'll see how it goes. I've started drawing up the top of the template, and to get the size down, I just put down my left arm and kind of traced around it with a pencil, and then started lightly sketching out with a pencil the shapes. Finally, I went back in with a ruler and a pen and started getting the dimensions down. And this doesn't have to be exact, it just has to kind of be sized right for my arm. I try not to stress out too much about the different armor pieces being exact because this is gonna be seen as a whole and I'm my own worst critic, so oh, I'm, I'm the only one who's really gonna see all the mistakes. But this seems like it's gonna be a pretty good size. It has this little panel that'll come off on the top here and these are gonna get folded over this little squiggly sad line over here is something I'm gonna have to figure out once I fold this because I'm gonna need some extra material there. And that's fine, I can add that later. These are gonna be hollow and hopefully attached to a bottom forearm piece. We'll see what happens when I cut this out and fold it over. I might have to remake this. This part is also gonna be probably inset a little bit into the foam. Now I'm going to crease this template and this is cardstock paper. All I need to do is really kind of add a little indent there and it will probably want to crease on the line. Yeah, there we go. So this will be 90 degree angle there. In my head I was thinking that when this was folded over that these two would separate and I need to add material, but I might not have to. And foam is pretty forgiving, so if I have to force this and it kind of curves a little bit, it'll still look fine. All right, so I got my arm, and this will go like that. That seems pretty good. I wanna make sure I have enough flexibility in my wrist. There will be a little armor piece here. And then this part goes up here. I wanna make sure that fits, and I think that's fine. This is supposed to go about halfway down my forearm, so there's gonna be another piece there. I'm gonna say that's good enough, and we're gonna start transferring this to some foam. I'm using a normal ballpoint pen to trace out my pattern, kind of marking where the little rivet things need to be, and I got this little trench figured out. This is six millimeter craft foam. I'm using the thinner foam for this forearm because I don't want to add too much bulk. The arms are supposed to be pretty thin. And the six millimeter has just enough structure to keep its shape. When I'm cutting out my foam, I kind of do a game of which angle is easier to cut first and then kind of work from there. So I cut everything out just a little bit. It really is worth taking the time to get the cut all the way through and not to tear the piece out because then you'll get like fuzzy stuff you have to clean up later. There we go. Now that I've got this cut out, I'm going to flip it over and trace on the areas where I'm going to add the hinges that will make this bend over to the side parts. That will be one there. One that goes down there. And there's an angle change down that way. I'm going to extend my blade just a little bit so I don't cut all the way through. I usually make it a little too shallow at first and check just to make sure. Yeah, it's, it's not quite deep enough yet, so 
It's just something that takes practice. So you start to feel how far the blade is going into the foam so you don't cut through the other side. All I did was cut straight down and if you wanted to bend your piece this way, you could just fill this in with hot glue or maybe some scrap foam and super glue and get that angle, but I want it to bend the other way. So I need to cut out a little wedge of foam. So I'm just holding the blade at an angle and cutting out a little trench. Sometimes it takes a couple cuts, especially with the first, first one you cut out because I'm not quite sure how far I need to go. There we go. You can pop that out. So now these can bend like that. That looks pretty good. I'm going to get the hot glue gun plugged in and then glue these together. But before that, I want to add the rest of the details and clean up all the edges on the rotary tool. Got our little battery powered rotary tool, which is perfectly powerful enough to handle foam. The sanding drum bit is scooted down the bit a little bit, so if I press straight down, I can do little rivet circles. Just carefully press it down. There we go. Now I'm moving over to a different sanding drum. This one has a finer grit. Now I think I'm going to go over every single edge, because even when this attaches to the bottom piece of the forearm, there's supposed to be a seam there and try and do the same thing with the inside of the piece here. Oh, I need to keep the inside of that piece. No, it's, I threw it in the garbage. No, garbage. I've got my little strip of foam that I want to inset in here, but I do want to smooth over all the edges. That's way easier to do before this is glued back in place. I've got these stone grinding bits, which also work well for smoothing out the edges of foam. These come to a taper, so it's kind of easier to get around these crevices. I'm going to use my heat gun on this to smooth out all of the little fuzzies from sanding and also seal the foam. I'm going to be hot gluing this together, so I don't want to heat form it later and have my seams start coming apart. I also cut out this little guy goes about right there. It's got more of a shiny look to it now that the foam is sealed a bit more. Just putting in a little bit of hot glue there. And then once I squeeze this together, it'll come out the side and that's fine. This is gonna be the inside, no one's gonna see it. And there's one of the angles. I'm going to inset this little trench a bit and hot glue this in place as well. Just trying to mash the hot glue into the corners there. Double checking my reference to make sure I don't glue this on upside down. I'm trying to put down a light layer of super glue almost all the way to the edges. And that's together forever. Yep, I'm really happy with the size of that. I think it looks great. It looks like the inner part of the forearm is the same shape. It just has a big hole cut out in it. So I think I'm just gonna take my template and flip it over like that. And I got some nice wiggle room in there. Yep, I think that'll work out. There we go. Now that this is cut out, I can clean up all the edges on the rotary tool and then take it to a heat gun and then use hot glue to glue up these side pieces. For those of you keen observers, you may have noticed that I did the hinges on the wrong side, so I effectively made the bottom of the right bracer. So these don't line up. That's okay though, I needed to make this anyway, so I was totally just working ahead. I remade this. I cut a little bit too deep in the trench here. There's a little, little strip that cut all the way through. I'm protecting this with a little bit of painter's tape so that when I put hot glue in there, I don't get the hot glue squeeze out going through the crack. Squish. I did trim away a little bit of the material on this end since this was angled. It didn't quite fit up with the bottom, but now it seems pretty good. I think this is ready to super glue together. And at least if this doesn't work out, I can always just cut it apart and change it. 
seems pretty sturdy. I can always reinforce the inside with some more scrap foam, but that seems like it's gonna hold really well. So here is the forearm piece. Goes on like that. Snugs here, but not too much. Not enough to start bowing out the shape. So I think that's gonna be perfect for fitting there. I'll probably need to add some little upholstery foam squishy bits in here to keep it in place, but I'll do that after painting. Here, I got a bunch of little test scraps of the upholstery foam. I can kind of wedge them in here to see how it's gonna look. And if I'm careful with the placement, I might be able to leave this part open like it's supposed to be in the reference. Look at all this ventilation. <laughs> it might be, this might be the first time I get to wear a forearm piece that doesn't get all sweaty and gross from being wrapped in foam. And here we have it, the finished forearm piece. This turned out better than expected. It really does help to take the time to put together a template first so that when you move over to foam, it can kind of save a lot of time and make sure everything fits. I'm really happy with how the mobility is with this. I have full range of motion and with these extra slots, there's some pretty good ventilation there. Thank you for following along with this build and look forward to more videos on my costume build. I've got a lot to get done, so stay tuned. I'll see you next time.